I expect them to run double supports here. Okay. And I'm quite curious. You don't often see double support lineups come up, but when Ophelia Tempest Parasite are banned, I guess that's where most both teams feel more comfortable. Yeah. I like the tort pick. Yeah. Throughout these, I'll say, I don't know if you agree, Senator, but throughout these brackets, it really seems like we've been seeing more dual supports than we have junglers, honestly. Uh, in the brackets? In these last uh, week, basically. I think more than we used to. I'm, yeah, more I, than we used to, sure. I guess that's I don't want to say, I, I, I honestly can't remember if I yeah. feel, how much of it, but definitely more than we've used to. Feels that way, at least, but... Uh, Team NK, so again, they got the Kronos, they got Rhapsody. So still lying maybe that Keeper here, or going a different think, direction now? I mean, I think Keeper could be good. Your versus uh, literally zero counter push heroes unless Torp maxes bonds. And then it means you can ban out like, something like an MOA in the second in the second phase of bans. They go Kraken, though. as their uh, pickup over here for Team NK, so. Kraken to finish things off. And to the next year of bands, look at the keeper band right off the bat. <laughs> Do you like that, Kyle? Because I feel like now they're forced into double support because it's a pretty obvious keeper is going to get banned as he does. Mm -hmm. I like it. I I don't know though. I kind of I like NK's lineup at this point. I, they're both fairly good. I'm just not a fan of the Moon Queen. I think that even though NK's lineup doesn't seem all that formidable in comparison, I think they have a plan to deal with it. I don't really. I, I expect to see a CD. I think. Mm -hmm. Also, single single core kind of gets countered by Chrono Suicide. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you can't kill him. And then, again, if they just can get some sort of ranged carry, the, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Draconis, in all honesty. <laughs> and that that would be what I would think. That's why the puppet the puppet band there, because that would probably be the most effective hero, especially with the Chronos. Like, that's just ridiculous amount of CC. Mm -hmm. Like, it's... It's just absolutely enormous, but I, well, maybe the dragon ban. I don't. I wouldn't ban dragon here. I don't think it's. I don't know. It's definitely. Eh, maybe. I mean, it is a comfort hero for NK. Yeah. I like that. Okay. The oh, that makes band. more sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really strong ban. That we didn't see. I didn't see that coming. But that would almost certainly be something NK was considering. Yeah. So with what we've seen recently of Vindicator, absolutely. I mean, that hero is just came on. Uh... Very strong in the competitive scene, and for good reason. Just again, as I always like to bring, just so annoying to play again. So, uh, not going to be seen here. The final ban, though, for NK. I, yeah, I think Draconis, though, is definitely a good candidate here. Actually, it's playing a lot of Draconis recently, and it does fit well with the Chronos bubble and whatnot. So, seems like that could shape up. But I mean, there's lots of different options. They could even do like a carry Chronos, which I'm not in favor of, but. It's always an option. Five seconds left in extra time for NK. I'd like to see BMG rush through this draft and kind of put the pressure on them. Whenever you've, you're have you coming off a victory, uh, it's, you're always in a much more confident position. And NK, with such little time remaining, yeah. I'd like to see them kind of force them into a panicked mode. Um, I want them, if they're going to take time here, they should plan out their next pick as well uh, and then be ready to go so that they can instantly pick and force NK to have only 30 seconds to complete their lineup. Yeah. MOA right-clicked right now by NK. Really hope that's not what they choose. Nymphora is not bad, but I think they need yeah. a stronger support hero here. I don't really like Nymphora with the heroes. Like, yeah, you always have the good presence. You can flank heroes, but I think if you're picking Nymphora, you should be having a, a really strong like gank set up with two heroes. That they could, could just... run like Nymphora Pebbles. Uh, yeah, they could run like Nymphora Pebbles and do Rhapsody Crack in mid. Just as an idea, but I, that that kind of defeats the purpose of Kronos. Yeah, I, I really just want to see them pick like a strong team fight lineup and have a carry. Because if it, if they have a strong team fight, I don't think they can lose it. Maybe Soul Stealer here. I'm expecting a Draconis, but I'd say Soul Stealer, maybe even not Soul Reaper, but it's possible. Soul Stealer, CD, Draconis, or the three I would be considering. Oh uh, yeah, I could see that direction. I think Draconis is just an easy one to go with because. Synergy with your Kronos. I know it's the one they like to play, but maybe they won't because it hasn't been the most successful in the tournament. It's a really curious choice here. BMG in normal circumstances are going to definitely choose Hag, <laughs> uh, but Hag is just so easily zoned out by uh, by supports. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're going to give him here. I assume a Grenix, melee hero would be best. Grenix, Madman, yeah, those heroes are still. Oh in wow! Here, so. I didn't. I didn't realize Grenix. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? It's like yeah. w after the first game, it, it just shows the difference in hero value depending on the meta at use. Yeah. Last game was what happens when you have a jungle meta, 
and those melee agility heroes are ridiculous. And this kind of meta, they're not nearly as powerful because you've got two supports to deal with them, and there's just no jungle threat. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just curious. We'll see what happens to Jera. Oh, right? Jera's Aya. Interesting. Oh. Mm. It's going to make the gauntlet a lot less useful, and they're going to have a lot less initiation, but the... Also, focusing more around the Moon Queen doesn't really make sense when you, but the other team already has Kronos, I think. Eh. It, it in essence guarantees that they'll win if they can get ahead. But, <laughs> like you said, it makes Gauntlet the only playmaker. And when you have an engineer on your team, he can't really do things on his own. It's nice to have setup stuns, but like, how do you, you can't gank for a Jerezaya. So... It's in essence relying that they're on their lanes to do well, and there's the Draconis pick as expected. Yeah, it's interesting here. I was gonna say, does that maybe counter the Draconis pick to an extent? Because Soul's or Soul's blessing is a very powerful tool for a hero like Draconis. When he's you know pops his cataclysmic assault, he's doing all the AOE damage, physical presence, and all of a sudden Soul's blessing goes up. So, is that considered somewhat of a counter? You think, or is it really like that's not overwhelming enough to pass up on Draconis? If anything, it might be more of a counter to the Kronos. Uh... Ultimate. Yeah. Just a, bit, a delay time. So, like, when Kronos pops it, you just ulti, your whole team should live, because it's mostly uh, physical damage coming out from the Hillborn team with their lineup, except for some magic with Kraken and Glacius. Mm -hmm. And Rhapsody, of course. Well, well, well. <laughs> Sir Bensington, the first game. We see Jerezaya this time around. Jerezaya, maybe not as rare by any means, but. Is this still. a tri lane? Oh, we see too often. Are they going to do a tri lane? I mean, both sides are. The dual support here, so. I mean, why else would they have a counter ward on torture unless they just really want to secure the pull block? But Jonas has a ward, so that makes me think it's not a tri lane. Hmm. I mean, 05 are setting up here from BMG. You see uh, NK basically doing the same, other than Kronos, really. He's off in the middle if, lane a little if bit. If they were 5 right here, they could have just, like, got it's an easy kill or two. Well, they're not going to meet up in the end. Because uh, if you look at uh, Seal Kid and Jonas, they're really far behind. They would have yeah. been in, like a 5v3 fight. But unfortunately, uh, NK not the same mindset. So not going for it. Let's see what they do with it. You see the Rev Ward and the Ward of Sight at the pole camp. <laughs> How about that? Making sure to block that out here at the top side. And is it going to be a trial lane? I mean, no. Yeah, it is. It is, really. With the Jerezaya. No, wait, what? No, I guess they just, the supports walked back in a very slow okay. manner. Yeah, that was, that's, what, that's what I was throwing off by. I was just like, Moon what? Queen was, con I think they were considering sending the Moon Queen trialing top. Okay. But I would not have approved of that at all. I think this works out. I give the edge here to NK, though, I'm fairly certain. I think Draconis is a stronger free farmer than Moon Queen, and I'm just more of a fan of their team fight composition. The only concern I have is really, will they have enough damage to gain to get kills with the Kronos? I normally like to see heroes with significantly higher damage but less disabled when you run a Kronos. Stuff like Pyromancer, Torture, for example. Yeah. But I don't know if like a Glacius Kronos could kill oh. a queen with free farm. You know? I think Glacius ultimate's pretty strong in a team fight with the uh, Kronos view. That's Kronos true. Field. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. And Dance Floor will do a lot of damage too. Like you Dance Ward does damage if the heroes aren't moving around. Yeah, you know? it does do a good amount of damage. That is true, too. Um, so l let me ask you, actually, about, uh, by the way, Kronos getting kind of boxed out, as you maybe would expect with the torture and doing his best, at least. But So the first game, you guys were pretty critical on the first pick, Moon Queen, and, and again, especially with it being a no support on the Moon Queen, just simply a solo lane that didn't work out too well. He does have a support this time. It is a two versus one. This should shape up for Fuzi to have a good time. So... Do you look at that first big Moon Queen this time around and be like, okay, well, this time it wasn't as big of a deal, or are you still not a fan of it, Kyle? Uh, it's definitely a better choice in this situation. As you can see, like, Torture, you can see how strong Torture is. He's probably the yeah. best zoning support on a hero like Kronos. Um, but, I mean, still, you still won't be able to keep him out completely. But I, I just feel like when you pick a Moon Queen, you need to, to you may guarantee his farm. He does simply with 350 range, he just doesn't, he can't fend for himself like other heroes can. It's a um, risk if you don't protect him in Queen with the dueling. It's and as you saw in the last game, it can just lose you the game. A big thing to note here: um, Hellborn did not choose to ward the pull camp of a uh, Legion. Um, Legion and BMG chose to double ward it. Yeah. So they really want to make sure that Jerzai gets at least a little something. Well, speaking of Jerzai, he's kind of in a, kind of an awkward spot right here. He's taking some good damage. Freeze fine. comes out. He should be fine. Yeah, but. 
is uh, kind of between the two heroes, but yeah, you see Glacius taking too much return damage from the creep wave as well, so. Not also, interesting to note, well. Tank Effect went Aura just because he didn't have uh, money for uh, for mana pots. Oh, wow, yeah. So, I think Hax really needs to buy the Ring of the Teacher or give Tank Effect control until he buys it because they really need that additional mana regen, the additional armor. And, this and more attack armor. damage, too. It's yeah. going to be 12 damage every round of auto attacks. That's pretty significant. Cherizai has mana regen. Oh, I guess he had a mana potion, but yeah, I mean, no. mid lane is really the only combative lane. You see an illusion rune picked up by Engineer. He's getting high ground on the Ancients as well. Most likely going to stack those 10 to 1 to 13 and 1, although I do believe the Rhapsody Kraken lane should win this as time goes on. But again, one big hook onto Rhapsody, and he is dead. Yeah. Do you think the Kraken Rhapsody lane has much kill potential, or is it more like a BMG overextends? More on the overextension. But I just like the. I think the lanes uh, just stronger in general. You as see, far as just uh, laning. Yeah. Uh, Glacius is going to be roaming mid. By the way, he's coming in again. He only has his freeze here. He doesn't have his glacial blast. It should be enough if they land their spells. Yeah. I think. If they can, that is. Usually, in most circumstances, it's just the auto attacks alone that will guarantee the extra kill. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, Lucian think... scouted him out. I think. Yeah, I think it is possibly. Yeah. But I mean, they know he's not top, and they know he's not pulling. So it doesn't take a brain surgeon to tell you where he might be. <laughs> what were you talking about, Sender? Oh, actually, middle lane though. We do have initiation right here. Call is going to be in a lot of trouble. He will be one out of attack for way. The bottle charge is not kill. enough. And yep, Glacius, sure enough, the patience pays off. It's and a huge kill. Bloodlust. 900 gold. That's going to be upgraded courier and boots. Plus, now we can go top and just continue to zone out this Jera, so uh, really good there. Uh, Draconis also, he's a much stronger solo laner than Moon Queen. Torture can't really afford to roam because Moon Queen can't really stop a Kronos from getting last hits in CS, whereas up top Draconis can box out the uh, Jera Zaya very, very effectively uh, just due to the longer range, um, the steroid E ability, it just, it's just much easier. Yeah. So this, this, is a, this is a favorable situation for sure for uh, this NK lineup. They were not able to, oh, they were actually, they were able to control both runes. Kronos actually guiding the bottom regen rune, so that's very helpful for him. And he was really low, right? He was like, yeah. Okay. He was, yeah. yeah. He, that was really important. Um, now he can get boots when he has the gold instead of buying a health potion or going back to base. Glacius roaming bottom. Let's see, Hellborn does have a lane ward though, so this should not really come to anything. He was able to get boots, by the way, because of that. He was the one that got the Bloodlust kill, so. Help it I out right don't. There. I, like I said though, like I just don't. Uh, there's the lane ward, by the way. But I just don't think he can't. He can't do anything here. He can counter the ward, but how are they going to kill the Moon Queen with? Maybe threats? someone else is going to come in. Let's see. Uh, no TP, so no. Yeah. Oh, actually though, ha Fuzi's kind of overextending a bit. Yeah. But he's going to get spotted out right now. Yeah, he's going to see him coming they in, and all of a sudden he's too far. They, like they don't. I. They, like this is what I'm saying. Like, they can't kill him. It's just a waste of time. That right there was Tank Effect. It's um. Losing his edge. It's called a thirst for blood. Uh, it's when you get a kill, and then you immediately <laughs> want to make another happen. Mid lane, by the way, that could be bad for Rhapsody. Yeah, he's in a Rhapsody lot of trouble. is oh, in nice a lot charge, of trouble. Nice charge, Nice job, Les. Ocean? Nope. Oh. <laughs> one for one exchange in the end. Support's really going well at it. Landing the charge, otherwise he probably would have died as well. And they wouldn't have got a kill. But either way, it's a one for one, so that's not bad. But they did get the Bloodlust, so. Yep. So overall, two to one hero kill it in their favor. But again, both Gauntlet and Kraken do ultimately survive right there, so. Supports exchanging for one another, but you do see crack at 350 gold per minute now, so his early farm definitely working pretty well. He's going to drop the bottle for Rhapsody as she ports in, and she's going to go to the bottom rune with it. We'll see if she happens to get uh, lucky with the Han Gods in this one as far as that RNG is concerned, and it is going to be a haste rune for Rhapsody, and this could be a possible kill rune. Oh, that's such a huge... Like, I, can't, I cannot understate how important that rune is. It, it, in essence, forces KGE to play much more passively mid as his support hero uh, was warding. And, and now the Kraken can't die. You can't coordinate a gank on mid, and they have total control of this yeah. lane. And if he gets a, if he gets a TP six. throw, which he does have, that means in for the next two minutes, no one can make a play on BMG without a huge risk happening of uh, getting counter-ganked. As you can see, like there's four heroes mid, but... Lions being smart, like there's no reason for them to be up aggressive here, and they know Kronos is missing. Again, this is the problem that I have with these no jungle lineups. It's like you have to do nothing so much of the time, just waiting, because we don't have like some like a smoke to just get you into a kill position. You have to dodge wards, and right now you can almost guarantee bottoms got wards, although it was countered, so that's nice. But it's just so difficult to make things happen in a game like this. Yeah. 
We saw in the middle lane, that was kind of an interesting <laughs> sequence of events from Super KG right there. He actually got lit blasted and tried to grapple at the same time on a Kraken, basically, but the grapple was just out of range. So the Gauntlet Blast hit, but they weren't able to follow it up uh, in the meantime. So Les QQ stays alive, and obviously they know that. Bottom lane, now. Zippy might over... No, he should be fine. Yeah, he's going to be... Uh, Moonbeam hits! He did have a Moon Finale, but... Might he would have had to Moon right Finale there. first, yeah. I believe, to kill Yeah, he would have. So it would have been a kill if he does it first, but Kronos might have reacted in time. Yeah. Yeah, I think if he does it after, he only gets one. If he does it before, he gets two. Would have been uh, too much of a risk there for uh, Fuzi to use that and not get the kill out of it. So how's this so, ma top matchup going, by the way? Jura's as expected, Haxer with the early start dominating the lane. Yeah. Uh, but Kyle, do you think Hax should go like an early no flare blade in this game, or like maybe like as this? You can never go no fire. Item? But you definitely don't want to go Nullstone, which is what I see a lot of people do. Although, actually, in this game, Nullstone's not bad. Against a Gauntlet, it's, yeah. It's against, like, Gauntlet, Moon Queen, and other things that can cancel it. But at the same time, I just don't like Nullstone on the hero, especially since you go BKB after. I'd like to see just the Energizer, uh, maybe Lifesteal, maybe just straight BKB route, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Because I, I think they just want to battle. It, once he gets a shrunken head up, like if, say if, if he gets shrunken head before Moon Queen does a lot of damage, he just won't die. It won't happen. Pretty much. And Gauntlet's yeah, in a really good position. Yeah. Hey, he's trying to be patient enough. All oh, the Glacius would be the prime target if that's possible, but. Do they I have the burst to bring down Draconis? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, no vestments up on Hacks. Yeah. No lane ward either, so they don't have any idea. But I guess they do because no one's farming mid. Yep. And it's like, okay, guys, where could KG be ganking? I don't <laughs> think he's bottom, so that means he's top. Yeah. yeah. Again, doing the, the math and easily spotting. This slows down Draconis' Moon Queen free farms. And in but, a game like this, the carry is really all that matters. So very wisely, Haxton just goes to the jungle. Yep. Which they have some stacks in. Oh, middle lane in the meantime. Engineer is going to get caught right. Release the Kraken's going to be bad, though. He kicks on himself backwards. He is going to be fine initially. It will finally fall to the dance floor right there, as well as the Staccato Stones. But now, let's kick you. He's in trouble on Kraken. Gauntlet Blast going to come out. There's the Moonbeam. The Moon Finale on top. And that should be, yes, easily a dead Kraken when it's all said and done. So a one for one exchange. Not worth it for Team NK right there. 390 plus gold per minute now for Fuzi coming out on the Moonbeam. Grapple in the meantime in the middle lane. Kronos gets caught, but. He does have that town loop going to be fine initially, but Rhapsody, not the same story. She will get caught down. And BMG, guess what? They're all five together all of a sudden. Again, that's what they do. Yep. Very Double sloppy kills. play there, sticking around. No need for that. Um, it, they use a lot of teleports and a lot of time to get all five there. You would get an advantage there if you're NK, but instead uh, they die just, just lingering. And you gotta, you just can't really do that against a team. Like you, you got to expect BMG. Like They never stop. Like, if you're, if they're there, like, if there's three there, you can assume there's five, and you should just back up. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that Lesky Q died there, but the key thing to note was that kill is only really possible, because, as you can see, it was, I don't even think they had time to communicate it, but Moon Queen went to the right of the trees, Gauntlet went to the left, like, immediately. <laughs> so his only choice was really to turn around, and it wasted some time there. Otherwise, he would have just been caught in between a rock and a, and a hard place. So, in hold on. In right coming top, Luigi. I... Don't think it's gonna be able to get anything though. I guess Tor has a T. Alts up in six. Yeah, oh, okay. maybe. There's the port. Oh, he's stuck around. He's sticking around a little bit longer. Uh oh, there's the grapple forward. Here comes Jarzad. The heal bomb comes out. Gauntlet Blast. No, he doesn't have mana for it. Bottle charge is being used. There's the Gauntlet. No, he got pushed back. Oh. The Gauntlet Blast will still go off. Are they gonna be in range though? Oh. They're not. Are you oh kidding me? Oh, KG. so many things went right that way. Uh, he just had to bottle charge there. As like as soon as he was hooking, he had to use his bottle but unfortunate his treads are also on the courier but that would have been a kill had he just had the foresight to bottle in advance but unfortunately the draconis will survive and like that's one of those kills that is just crucial because yeah. he's already behind moon queen that puts him even further behind yeah and uh, i don't know fuzi as you can see he's, he's basically the helm of the victim ahead right now and that's a pretty significant advantage he's equal in cs the one thing that i'd like to see um, NK capitalize on is the ability to farm ancient significantly earlier than this legion side, but they have yet to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should already be triple stacked or at least. Yeah, I agree. They it could... with all the time Kronos has had to just do absolutely nothing. Mm hmm. Like when you have a Draconis, you can capitalize but, uh, on your lineup so much just by farming ancients and having someone else take the top lane in the meantime. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing else really going on though. The game's going to be turned out to be a little bit more passive. Not too surprising here with the makeup, <laughs> of course. But, uh, you You're know, fine, you, you always like to stress sender about the whole ancient blocking. Uh, so far, none of that going on just yet. But I'm sure throughout this game, 
Uh, we can possibly see that. And, you know, we have seen players like Support comes to mind on the engineer, get those mines earlier on to even block camps and whatnot. But uh, we'll see if that maybe comes up here for, for engineer or not. I mean, for now, just going the more typical 2-2 build here and staying away from mines. But uh, oh, do, you th do you think NK should take a, t like look to take a fight? Engineer's only a level fork, uh, so they could uh, capitalize on this for a little, some time now. I mean, they're grouped up here somewhat. There's only three of them. Kronos is here with that Chronosphere ready, so it's almost as if they are trying to bait something out, but nothing's going to happen in the time for the time being, and actually bottom top lane. tower gets denied right there. Yeah, bottom lane being aggressively pushed in. That's going to be a free tower kill, so they're going to go for middle now, but I'm sure PMG is going to be ready to react if they do. Yeah, they're going to go this for it. Kind of, this Kronos fight. isn't here. He has a TP, though. NK would win this fight if it's taken, I'm fairly certain. They need to land a really good gauntlet hook, but they're going to have to back up for now. But I don't think uh, the, it's in deny range now, so they kind of have to force it. Uh, but I don't think you can fight into this. However, ooh, see, now it's five against four, and they're postured for position. Yeah. Illusion taking some Moonbeam right there. Deny on the tower, though. Kraken's going to charge it in here. Oh. But he charged out the uphill. A little bit of a misplay right there. In comes the Kronos in the back row, but actually Kronos going to timely for way before he gets turned on. The Soul's Blessing comes out, though. Kraken's going to fall. Rhapsody's Protector Melody was out of range by the time the Dragon gets here. The fight is already done. Kalatius is going to get picked up to the side, most likely. Yes, he will. They're still chasing. Draconis going to, or excuse me, Rhapsody going to fall. Draconis going to hold his ground. Kronos sleeps back here for the kill on a torture. But again, obviously no Kronos fear up, so not able to catch him. But would have been a pretty big one. And that that will be the end of the fight for the time being, but definitely a hold there for BMG in the end. And buyback on this QQ also. Oh, wow, yeah. What, what do you think of that? Ultimate. That was obviously... His ultimate was a whiff pretty much once again. He also charged an engineer to the high ground. The Chronosphere only hits one hero, and it's a torture with Impel up. So he was, in essence, doing full damage anyway. Just really poor coordination by NK. And, like, the whole purpose of the strategy, the whole purpose of having the Dragon go Energizer is so that you can take these early fights with five and win them. But, like, what's the purpose of having your dragon go battle items if he's not going to get there before the fight even starts? Yeah. You know, it, you just, they have to be more direct with their calls. But again, since there's a no jungle team, just to continue to stress it, like, these fights don't mean that much. It's not that big a deal to lose one or two. Yeah, but actually, they're going to get a gank here in the middle lane. Gauntlet is going to be left behind. And big gank. It big kill. Picked up, Look yeah. at the advantage drop. 1,000 XP evaporates and the gold lead is now in favor of NK if ever so slightly so really huge there and the one thing again Draconis didn't die he's a um, hundred GPM behind the Moon Queen largely in part because Moon Queen just needs that life steal to free farm but once he takes that triple stack ancients which his team is finishing up right now he'll be pretty damn close yeah gonna be good and it does have to do with the kills to pull back in there. Level 11 Moon Queen. Speaking of Ancients, she's going over to her own, actually. Those are triple stacked. Now, there is a ward of sight spotting this, so we'll see if Team NK... They should react, but yeah. can they? Like, do they? I don't think they have the resources to at the moment. Dragon's really low. Uh, Kraken's in the vicinity, but where's Kronos? Yeah, he's bottom, so probably no reaction, mm. but they're making one. They're trying. I mean, Glacius is heading over. And yeah, you do see Rhapsody also coming over, but now Gauntlet's here to even protect if need be. And actually, Glacier's going to come in. The Glacial Tampor going to be his. He's trying to steal something, and he Holy will shit. steal some right there. Kraken release the Kraken to the back on Engineer. And uh, Kelfield, or excuse me, wow, the uh, Keg Sun's going to be coming out right there. Scatters him a little bit. The protected melody in the back on going to be a pretty big one at that. Rhapsody is going to fall down. Goes Glacier's big Chronosphere coming out from Kronos. Will it result to the kill, though? It will not, unfortunately. Now Kronos, he's in trouble, as well as Kraken. Kraken's one auto attack for Way for Death. He will be finished off with a grapple. And Kronos goes down, so guess what? I mean, they stole some Ancients, but they weren't all five together, and that showed right there. Yeah, they really should just use the Chronosphere as a retreat. Like, just run away. They got, like, four of the Ancients. That's all you can really get. And again, like, you're fighting BMG. They're going to be five. They were five. Your Draconis is farming with no mana. Yeah. You've got to be more, con like, they're, they're just, it looks like they're just not composed enough, in all honesty. Too, too jittery. I mean, there is a lot on the line, but, like, BMG has experience. They've lost in a lot of, uh, I think the first step to winning is losing, and BMG <laughs> has lost a lot of games. They've lost at land. They've lost tournaments to go to lands. They don't want to do it again. This isn't their first time, and NK really just showing their inexperience. Yeah. I definitely think, I, I, again, when we announced it on the podcast yesterday, they had both uh, members of each team representing, and both of them obviously very positive reactions, but you could especially tell with Hansky and the sigh of relief, like, wait, we actually have another chance. Holy crap, that's amazing. So they're taking the most of it so far. They win the first game, and they're in a, they're in a better spot here in game number two. Now, with that said, there is still plenty of game left, I'm sure. But. Oh, yeah. 
this advantage is nothing, in all honesty, especially with the way the heroes, uh, the hero lineups are comprised. I'd expect, uh, it, again, it just takes one good Corona. Like, they just need to coordinate their AoE, and they're good to go. They've yet to take a fight five on five, so we'll see how that plays out. But the late game effectiveness of Kronos cannot be understated. Oh, yeah. Jerzai is much more effective right now, but Kronos, late game, the more the more items people get, the, the stronger Kronos is going to be. So what do you think of Jerzai, by the way, in his skill book? Because, again, he isn't that, he's just pure utility, really, this game. You know, being here to support Moon Queen, if anything, keep her alive. Could you even see something like earlier on Portal Key, an early tablet, obviously, would make sense. To just sit uh, in the background uh, and then get to support the team when they need him. I think a tablet would be good. Astrolabe could also be good because there's not the most amount of burst damage up on NK, so just keeping your team up uh, like full HP would be pretty strong as well, having that a lot of heal potential. Yeah. Well, we'll see what he goes for here, but 18 minutes into the game. So, again, the first game ending pretty quickly, too, in favor of BMG. Most certainly expecting this one to take a take a good chunk of time longer, especially at this rate too. And Chronos porting yeah. top. Okay, never mind. Thought they might have been trying to look to do something, but never mind. Just gonna just gonna take the farm up there at the top side. Uh, good blocking ancient on blocking. ancients. Yep. Yep. Good ancient blocking by Seal Kid. Very important. Oh, this could be a big kill chance. Move Finale hits a couple of the heroes right there. Will they at least get the kill to one of them? No, they will not. The release the Kraken comes out and. Safe to say the Han God's on the side of Glacius and Kraken right there for the most part. <laughs> Barely staying alive, each of them, because of how the bounce really, spread. That would have been really bad for NK. Or, like, that would have been tough to recover from. That gives Moon Queen pretty much the Geo's finished and a huge advantage. Yeah. Now he's still just ever so slightly ahead of the Dragon. Well, 90 GPM, but two kills and six assists will do that. That's pretty much the whole advantage. CS scores are deadlocked right now, so. Yeah. Basically identical, but again, you look at Draconis, he has that Firebrand. Uh, so obviously, again, not going the Nullstone route as you're stressing. I mean, this, in this game maybe has uh, beneficial, but in the end, going oh. the Firebrand here. Let's, let's QQ picking up a Helm of the Black Legion. Strongly against that, especially against nearly a pure magical damage team. No vestment yet, but just not not the right choice here, in my opinion. Portal Key would rather see in her. Anything. Sackstone, like, Portal Key, yeah. Bulwark. Barrier, puzzle box, pick an item. I'd prefer it more. It's yeah. just not what I think is effective here. Draconis putting bottom kind of odd. I guess he just wants to find some farm. It looks like they want to give Kronos top lane to get some farm going. He's getting uh, ganked though. He is. Uh, no, he is going to be fine. Yeah, that's I've I've done that exact thing in Super KG. He blinked in, but Kronos was in so many creeps that he couldn't okay. find him. Yeah. <laughs> he had to react with hook, but his your brain's thinking ultim ultim. Shit, I can't click him. Now it's too late. Yeah. So he does time leap away with these. Obviously, that was a big gank setup. But yeah, you're right. You're kind of supporting bottom to pick up the farm down there. But in the meantime, Moon Creep was doing the Ancients. So, and again, we just talked about that. The blocking of the Ancients coming out from Seal Kid, unlike from NK, they're not blocking the Ancients on the Legion side. So that's just another advantage that the Moon Queen's able to take advantage of and continuing that run that 90 to 100 gold per minute mark lead here. Over Draconis. There's the Geometer's Bane finished. Okay, so she has Geometer's Bane now. Is this a point maybe where if you're this Legion team, Let's start fighting here. Let's start forcing fights, you think? Now, the, you don't need to, I don't think. Moon Queen's far enough ahead to the point where team fighting can really only hurt you. I think you wait until he finishes the Shrunken and gets level 16, which at, with those items, he'll farm that in about well, five, six minutes. Do you really need a Shrunken if you're Moon Queen? Like, who else do you repel? Like, would you rather? Sure, that, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you could just get a wing bow, then go. Like, a wing bow or a satanic, and suddenly that, like, that's an item. That's a huge advantage. Geometers, not so much. You can see his HP is still only 1,300. Draconis is about the same. But if he gets that next tier item up before Draconis, then it's go time. Especially he, since Draconis will be going shrunken next. So if, I think if he gets yeah. wing bow vestments, and uh, he'll just be so hard to kill. So much physical damage coming off from Hellborn, that not the most magic damage, and uh, it's going to take so long to kill him through Soul's uh, what just all of Jerzai's abilities. Yeah, Soul's blessing definitely going to come into play here. There's that protective charm as they're pushing the bottom tower. You see what NK is doing though; they're reacting with a couple of counter pushes here, top and middle, both at secondary towers all across the board. So this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. There's the bottom tower kill. Oh, he grapples him. Actually, he got Kronos right there. In comes the Gauntlet Blast. The lockdown is going to be enough. No rewind procs, really, if any, coming out there for Kronos. And he does die in the end. So the tower does stay alive. The top tower also going to stay alive. Safe to say, good hold there from BMG. 
I think NK keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. It's just they're not five, they're not five, and it's that's really the sole reason why this game is six K, six K into BMG's favor. Yeah, BMG. It, it, it again, it just comes down to like experience. NK was winning against BMG because the games were focused on fighting as five and just tempo. Like the games were were action packed. This is more of a, this is just a slow roll. This is control the objectives. Um, have more efficient map movements than the, the other teams. Stack more. Get the kills where you can. You know, and and BMG are they've got so much more practice playing this type of game, and I think that's showing. Yeah. Um, NK is just going to need to step it up to bring it to to bring this one home. But six K, six K is not an insurmountable lead per se. But Moon Queen's now six hundred GPM, and like, I don't know. It's going to be really tough to catch him. Yeah. He's already finished the Dancing Blade. Well, and she has that Jerizai protecting her, one of the ultimate heroes in that sense. So. Obviously, it's just a very, very powerful start here for BMG and approaching that 23-minute mark. But again, as pointed out, NK is not crazy behind by any means. They, if they get together as five, <laughs> which I keep stressing, it's like, guys, just fight as five, then maybe we can actually win these fights here. I the think Draconis has to go like straight Savage Mace now, in all honesty. Yeah, he has 4,000 gold saved up, so. Yeah, but can he afford to? Like, he needs a shrunk Nut at the same note just because of Gauntlet and the magic damage that's going to come out, the stuns. Well, he just went shrunken. So, whether he should have or not, I mean, that's what he has now. So, we'll see if how much of an impact that has. Well, he's just getting caught by Engineer right here. <laughs> support for support going at it. Oh, he puts the energy field down. He's really, really forcing something right here. He does have support coming in. Chronosphere catches a couple in the background. But here comes the flank towards your Moon Queen. The Moon Finale going out. The Dragon's here with a Golden Dragon. But now he's all of a sudden by himself. He turns around the Dragon Flame. We'll get the Golden Torch. Protect the Melody. Not going to do anything. Still alive here on BMG. Are two of them actually? It's just Jerzy and Moon Queen, as uh, it's all that's left in the meantime. Whether buybacks or definitely was, it looks like yeah, actually Glacius buys back. It really, it was a three for three, but they got more quality heroes on Hellborn's side, so they definitely won that fight, even with the buyback issue there. They might have done a little better had Draconis not run into the friendly Chrono Assault. Well placed by Zibe, just miscommunication there, but yeah. it was a good fight, and that that's what can happen. I mean. You, you'll you kill heroes that quickly. The, the Jerezaya pick's just really paying dividends here. No defusal blade, no real counter to him. So um, yeah, it, that's really the answer they had. He wasn't quite positioned well enough, but in these big team fights, if Jerezaya doesn't get killed first, I don't see Moon Queen ever dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was also just kind of awkward in the sense of how BMG is really trying to force something there, specifically Seal Kid. Catching out Glacius at the middle lane and right next to the tower too. So it actually put Team NK in a good spot to react to it as they did. And in the end, you know, not the even arguably a favorable outcome for them, but still. BMG can't be greedy right now. They're taking enemy ancients. How lucky for them. This Ward by Tanka fight doesn't quite see it. Maybe it does. Yeah, maybe it just spots them kind of going up there, but they're just not close enough to react in the end. And, I mean, it's taking them a while to do it. Yeah, it's just really Jerezai and Engineer. Not the most efficient con or uh, ancient killing team, but... Yeah, they're going to get a couple of them at least, and they're going to leave the bigger ones behind, though. So you're gonna, not the most crazy take the there. The problem, I still still just have such a huge issue with Kraken's item choice. I think it's more important than we've really let on because other than Draconis, he's really the only hero who's had a favorable start, and he's kind of, he's filling the same role as the Gauntlet is. And a Blink Dagger on Gauntlet is infinitely more useful than this Helm of the Black Legion on this QQ. I think he just needed either some sort of team support item or a blink of his own just so that they could actually have a way to start a fight and get a kill. But right now, Chronosphere is really their only initiation, and yeah. it's just not cutting it for them. Yeah. Uh, also, haxorn has got to go for the Savage Mace, so expect to see him pick up the 2200 piece in just a second. I think people have just gotten Helm on Kraken so long they feel it's core, but it's just really not at this point in the game. You can build him as like a pebble, just get like a blink shrunken head. It's, but uh, he went with the Helm. It's... He has the portal key now, so at least they're going to have that initiation now at least. You see Moon Queen here, though. She's got that wing bow, the 100 extra range on top of just the evasion aspect and the damage output, of course. So, yeah, so many things looking very powerful here for the Legion team. 690 gold per minute now for Fuzi on the Moon Queen. And guess who's ready? Congress ready to be done right here. So, BMG at least going to attempt Congor. Double damage run on Moon Queen. Well, that helps. I think that's a free Congor with the DD rune. Jeez, that is just Especially dropping quickly, yeah. <laughs> just her and Gauntlet alone are just stomping the Congor, and that is going to be an easy kill in the end. So now you got a token of life to deal with. Haxorin's got to buy an item. Buyback will not save them. I think Zibe does too. He should buy like an Elder Parasite. 
They need as much damage as they can get. Otherwise, they're just gonna like they're losing a farming game. So they need to be taking fights. But at this point, like the the wingbow advantage now he's 700 GPM, and this is what happens when you get ahead on a hero like Moon Queen. You just get further and further and further ahead. And this is the timing that I like to see them hit. They have a wingbow on Moon Queen with no answer on the Hellborn side. They have token. Like this is where you want to push and make your play. And I think that's what they're gonna do. Charms up on Moon Queen. What are they doing? They're just letting him take the base. I don't get it. Yeah, it's it's a tough spot. I mean, it's like all it is ready to hook, but at the yeah. same time, you kind of have to do something. Yeah. But the blink finally finished on Kraken there. Okay. Yeah. So he has that to jump in now, and so they let the first wave kind of go out the tower. The tower is still alive, barely. This next wave, most certainly, going to clear it up here. I'd like to see them charge Moon Queen as far back as possible, kill him somehow, and then just go for uh there's the diffusal by the way picked up on draconis yep, there you go Kraken. oh he missed the charge he tried to there's go for repel. it muku with the side step though. okay the repel but maybe okay anyways he is gonna be fine he does uh get tabbed backwards in the meantime call it with the grapple on a glacius right there and that's one kill already just like that if they so. defusal that first it's much 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 better yeah that's true. But again, like that, like you can see, the whole team revolves around Moon Queen, and you saw how fast he dropped. Like, yeah. if they kill him, they, that's there we pretty go. big. They jump back in. Chronosphere, maybe. There we go. Chronosphere coming in. He got Jira's eye as well. That's a huge start. Chronosphere is pounding into him. That is going to activate the token of life. In the meantime, the energy field is down. Kraken getting out. locked in. in. Protect him. Nice. going to become a Moon Queen. She's being locked in again. The release of Kraken doing work. Will she be locked in to death? No, yes, she will in the end. Jaris, I could not keep her alive. The damage is enough from Team NK. They're going to pick off Jonas the Panda, looks like, as well as they chase him down. And now Engineer is going to get caught out. So the hold is absolutely successful for Team NK. He cried another buyback on Glacius, but not the biggest deal in the world at all. And they, they hold. And that further exemplifies the, the pace of the game that NK is playing. Really well done team fight there. That's exactly what they had to do. Chrono Salty cuts off the team, kills Moon Queen, and like if only they had been able to do that earlier, Breaky, like, ah. Yeah. Oh. Like, that, that can happen so easily every time. And as Draconis gets scarier and scarier, that, that gets easier and easier to do. And again, the only CC they have is the gauntlet. If, if he gets his big, unless Gauntlet initiates on Draconis, he's going to kill everything. There's so much easier to lock the Moon Queen down. He does have a lot of gold, however, and it is still looking pretty scary for NK, but that was desperately needed. Haxon really playing a great game. If, if you're Moon Queen here, do you just right click Shrunken Head or do you go Null Stone? I would finish Satanic. Really? Yep. He's just going to get purged, though, and then he's going to get stun locked. I don't think Satanic's. So I think he needs to do a Null Stone or Shrunken Head, otherwise, he's just going to be stun locked for the whole team fight. Null Stone's actually. Probably the best choice in all honesty. I'd rather Nullstone repel than Shrunken. Um, I think I, I, nah, just go Shrunken. Honestly, just go Shrunken. Then Jera could do, repel a different hero, perhaps. Or you can use it later in the play. Yeah, exactly. Like just, I, I would definitely say the uh, the Shrunken here is the way to go. Because yeah. you can't Shrunken out of repel. So if you feel the, if after you get purged, if you just BKB before the Chronosphere goes off, you're pretty much safe. Yeah. Draconis damage just isn't high enough to go through the Wingbow until he finishes the Savage. Yeah. I mean, how about that decision making? That's like right at the last second. Okay, they're pushing here. I'm going to go Null Fire Blade, and clearly that paid off. And they almost have a refresher now on Tecronos. Shrunken Head picked up on Moon Queen, so I wonder if BMG is going to look to make a play with that because they're not really getting any new items anytime soon, and they probably know that BM or NK is going to get stuff soon because they haven't seen really anything picked up on Kronos, so they might want to for uh, force a fight before refresher. Mm -hmm. See more Ancients being cleared out here, and... Did she get the shrunken? Yeah, okay, she yeah, did. she did. Okay, so just saying the gold advantage is back to six thousand, but when it was six thousand previously, uh, it was twenty six and twenty. Now it's fifty three and forty seven. So, yeah. like it's it's now a three percent edge. Bottom lane. If Kronos dies here, it would be a really big deal. But no, he backs off. Okay. Uh, he has five thousand gold, guys. Is he going refresher? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. I think he's. I like it. I I like here, it. Yeah. I think that that's. It's a level 16 Kronos with Refresher is ridiculous. That's 10 seconds of CC. Mm -hmm. They can, in essence, just lock down Moon Queen until he dies. And I assume that's going to be the plan because, like I said, they're all in on Moon Queen. Jerezaya's yeah. usefulness is solely to buff the effectiveness of another hero on his team. If that hero dies, he's worthless. Yeah, and his Kronos for last time, it caught Jerezaya as well, the initial kill that they got in Moon Queen. So, you know, imagine getting a full 10 second lockdown on. Hero like Jerezai especially, you're looking pretty good. Uh, good chances in those fights. So, yeah, the restoration zone definitely making sense here. Yeah, the Shrunken was the choice on Fuzi. I think we probably discussed that. Yeah. But Haxion, like, again, Haxion's playing a pretty good game. I don't know if those early team fights were his call or his team's call, but 
Like since then, they've he, when he's been, you've noticed the fights he participates in, they do pretty well in. Imagine if they'd showed up and the game was still even. Uh, but alas, that was not the case. XP now in favor of NK. This is a team that's very momentous. Carlos has no TP. This is, he needs to get one. Maybe it's on the courier. Yeah, it is. Okay, never mind. Okay. But Rex Rex is also 5,200, right? Yeah, he's going to play it after he comes okay. back to base. Yeah, I guess the poor yeah. gonna pick it up. If you're hacked, you definitely go Savage Mace, right? Just to counter the Wingpo? Or do you go your own Wingpo? You have to go Savage Mace. No other option. Let's I mean, see. could you go your own Wingpo? Or, but I guess since you just want to lock down Moon and kill it. he they need to kill something during the duration of Kraken and Chrono Assaults. If they can't do that, they're going to lose. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think he has to go Savage, 100%. Oh, this could be big. Kronos, I mean, he does have a time leap and everything, but oh, it gets it off! The Coloblast hit, the Crabble's gonna miss. Chain reactions, I will connect! He's in a lot of trouble right here. This is gonna be a big pick right here. He buys the Wrestle Stone at least before he dies, but he is now down for 64 seconds. That was really Rax risky. Exposed. That might have, that's Rax. That's Rax. But I'm not sure, like, okay. Do you think it's the right play to buy the item? Like in the situation, yeah. you're level 16, you're down for a long time, or do you say like, we'll give up whatever they take and we'll just take the next fight well, after this that? This is the thing though, this is the thing. They'll assume he has buyback, so he's gonna yeah. luck out. But this is a situation, it's risky, but like this is this is the choice in essence. BMG, we, it's easy to say from our situation, oh, they should be pushing now, he has no buyback, that's a racks, but they're not sure and they're gonna play it safe. This is in a situation where being aggressive may have rewarded them, um, but alas, it is not to be. So yeah. Zibe, in essence, that death is not that big a deal. It, it isn't. Absolutely not. It's just <laughs> it's just gold to BMG, yeah. basically. Yeah, that that could have been a lot worse indeed. So he will have the Resto Stone, and he's level 16, as you pointed out. So again, that's 10 seconds of absolute AOE lockdown. If he's able to Blink land on those Jezaya, off. there you go. With the push yeah. book as well. That's pretty good. He'll just be able to blink in, push Moon Queen, and hopefully save the day. But th this just means the Chronosphere placement's large. It's one of those. It, it's one of the more annoying things I find in MOBAs where you just have like such little space. Like the difference between being able to be pushed out of a Chronosphere and being able, like not being able to, could make the difference in the entire game. Yeah. Like just, just so it's like which, which quadrant is Zibe going to align his Chronosphere in? You know. Like, which, Direction will they give him space? Yeah, I like going barbed armor deal. Like I think that's pretty good versus dragon. I I really like it. I think Jarrah should should get one as well. But I think the blink was necessary. Yeah. Ooh, Satanic simple. finished on Moon Queen. Yep. They need the Savage on Draconis before the next fight. That's gonna make the big difference. He should be able to get it. He's 800 gold. And eh, maybe not. It depends how hard BMG forces it. Yeah. I, I think that that I think they win the fight with Savage. If they don't get the Savage, I don't think they do. I think Moon Queen would be too hard to take down. Now, if you're cracking here, what do you go? Do you go Barbed Armor? Do you go Soul's Bulwark? Bulwark, 100%. Soul? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, probably. You need the Minus Armor will be good for Draconis focusing down. And Barbed Armor is good versus Moon Queen, but the idea is you're killing him in the Chronosphere bubble. So what's Actually, the I'd go Abyssal here. Really? Okay. Well, it's plus five armor to your team, so that's more than a bulwark, and it gives 16% damage. So, it's pretty much a defensive bulwark, but better, plus it gives damage. So, and there's no ring of the teacher on the team. So that's five armor they just don't have right now. Well, as long as he spends his gold on one or the other, uh, there's really no point. Like, you don't want buyback here. Like, you're cracking, you're probably going to get your spells off, and uh, what are you it's really going to do if you buy back? Well... You got the Savage Maze, as you pointed out there, so uh, they are going to be ready to fight now. Again, BMG not playing as extra aggressive in a couple marks there. That could have they uh, are, paid off for them, but... They're they are increasing their gold lead, though. Like, yeah. since they picked off Kronos, it was about 8, now it's 10. It was 6 before they got Kronos, so they're getting further ahead. Moon Queen's GPM is increasing. Like, he's still he's at 700. He was at 680 a second ago. So even though Draconis is holding steady at 500, they're still getting further ahead. The thing to keep in mind is that the super-duper late game, everybody's maxed out. NK is going to roll over BMG. That's really what you have to keep in mind. So while they are getting further ahead, they are going to need to find a good timing. I assume it's going to come with the token. Yeah. But... Ooh, but Barbed armor now on tour. I don't know. Like, is he really in the front where that's going to be a big? It, it's probably good. Yeah. It's just having that against no the bonus, man. Yeah. It just can't be bad. It, exactly. Yeah. The, just he can't control his cataclysmic assault in, in the sense of who would hit so it'll round him. So. You know what yeah. this means? This means he has to go elder parasite to counteract it. <laughs> okay, Kyle. Not kidding. No, you can just go whispering yeah. home. No. Nah, elder parasite. 
You're trolling. He's a shrunken head. <laughs> has to get an elder prayer. Sorry. It's so good. Uh huh. Gives him HP. Yeah. And life steal. Tell me more. And attack speed. Is that what it really does? Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, fascinating. Um, Congor is back up, obviously, and that's this will be the second Congor kill, I believe. We've only had one so far, so opening is just yet. But as a, as always in a game like this, we're gonna see a Congor, I'm sure. At least uh, around the pit, and that's exactly where we are right now. Top lane's pushing in for NK. They have positional advantage on the map right now. Yeah. Uh, ward vision, there's an, the advantage is probably in favor of BMG. They have a really nice ward that shows the Hellborn jungle, and Legion will call a vote to pause. I can only assume it's a strategy pause. I'm not surprised. I mean, if you're BMG, it's, isn't this kind of a hard fight to take? You're against Kraken, uh, Chrono Field. It's an impossible Chronos. fight to take, in all honesty. Yeah. You have to get... You can in you in essence lose the game by losing a fight, because yeah. as soon as Draconis evens up with Moon Queen, the game is over. So they need to make a like this. It's obviously like it's a tough decision to make. I don't think you can fight in all honesty. I really but don't. if you give up the Congor, it's going to give more time to NK, and you don't have the gank lineup, so you can't really say okay, we'll give him token and we'll look to find kills to maybe get it back but like if, if there's a timing in all honesty it probably is right now they don't know it but as you can see every pl player on hellborn has over a thousand gold save two thousand on kraken so that's about 7k ish um when you add in all the extra so and they're 10k behind on top of that mm -hmm. much uh significantly less gold saved on the legion side so it's like a 15k advantage going into this fight but i'd still give nk the edge if they don't get optimal initiation on bmg mm -hmm. like what does bmg try to do maybe hook in the gut the chronos but they they have the, do they have the damage to lock him down, like with some good rerun uh, procs? Well, they need to initiate on Draconis and, in essence, force Kronos to use his Chronosphere on Draconis. They don't have a push book. They really desperately need Tank Effect to finish his, but he has two buybacks used. Otherwise, that is a push book. And without that, like in essence, both teams are gunning for the enemy team's carry. It's just, and they're baiting with Moon Queen Illusion I like that. <laughs> like... If he sells his Pretender Scar and he gets the tablet. I think I think you just have to get a tablet here because otherwise, <laughs> if they initiate on Draconis, you can't save him. Yeah, he should really sell his TP and his Pretender's Crown and just get a tablet. It's like so big, they they really need it, as you're saying. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, it's it's obviously so tense right now. When is and if that jump is going to happen? Is it coming up? Oh, let's kind of go to SCS. They're going to catch Kronos on the other side. That's going to be a big kill. If they get all the rewind proc coming out, he tallies away. And now the other oh. team ready to fight. They're oh. going to catch Kraken off to the side. There's one Chronosphere coming out. Draconis is sitting there, pounding an auto attack. Soul's Blast is going to be used. The no fire blade. Out comes the BKB. Huge. But there's the second Chronosphere. Gauntlet's now in a lot of trouble in the front ground. He is eventually going to be pressed down. Moonqueen, though, splitting up. And now it's her turn, baby. She's going to pop her ultimate right there with the Moonbeam. But nice protective melody helping to save Draconis. And it will end with two deaths on the Hellboy side, three deaths on the Legion side. <laughs> that was interesting, man. I mean... Yeah, the refresher is down. But, yeah, really good fight. You could see, though, Draconis just didn't quite have the damage to finish off the Moon Queen without yeah. the team support. So, uh, yeah, it was still a really good fight. Nice Kraken LTI. He used it a little early, and the, the refresher ultimate by Zibbe was a little late. But either way, well-executed team fight. And that should could potentially like kind of tell the tale of what will happen if this game continues for another 10, 15 minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, also the positioning for Jonas of Van. He, again, took advantage of that portal key. He was way back. There was no way he was getting caught. And then he portal keyed in as soon as the second bubble came out, I think it was, and they popped that Soul's Blessing. Oh, GD on Moon Queen. I think they're just going Ooh. for it. Couple of things. Yeah, GD on Moon Queen. Yeah, she's going to be around that area. But Elder Parasite just picked up by Kronos. We I think this is just earlier. free Congor. Maybe not. Ugh, mate. They're being they spotted. Have yeah, they don't Chronos have a Chronosphere. 30 seconds. Gauntlet it's is still dead. Like call. They can take this fight right now oh if they go boy. for it. Oh, boy. They are. They're going. They're going. They don't have the big ultimates, but Moonquin going to be locked down. There's a heal bomb coming out. In comes the Geometer's Man, but she has that TD. Jarkonis pops a shrugged head, but look at Moonquin chasing. She is definitely the stronger auto attacker here for now, and she's going to fall back Chronos. in the meantime. There's double damage wearing Chronos off right there. Real soon. Real soon. Repel used on Jerzai as well. Yep. Nice oh, there's the hook on Glacius. Down goes Glacius. Really cracking in the background. It's going to kind of pull in Moonqueen a little bit. She can't really auto attack right now. She has to stand her ground. In comes Kronos. He has the Kronos field going to be coming up. No, he's not going to use it, though. Moonqueen's going to be fine for now. And now Kronos is going to be on the run. Kronos was picked off in the background, obviously. So big kill right there. There goes the Kronos fear. Here comes the chase from Jerzai. Actually going to slow him with the R a little bit, but not going to be nearly enough for the kill. But this will now be a Congo kill. I wasn't even watching after Kronos died. He got chased down by the Gauntlet Jerzai. He was just isolated, and he, he again, like, the Chronos ult wasn't up. They chose to go in beforehand, and that yeah. was just a bad decision there. 
Uh, they lingered around a little long, and Gauntlet was able to show up, get a hook. And now BMG, if they're smart, just push mid. They have the token. Kronos field down, force the Draconis buyback, and at least get a Rax here, even with a buyback. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see them pressure top as well and get two. I think NK is going to give up mid, then BMG is probably going to push top, and there might be buybacks coming out on Draconis. Mm. Yeah, there you go. No Kronos field for six more seconds. That will be a Resto Stone use. But he will have one if they absolutely want it right here. But the melee rax is going to fall. Moon Queen being purged off. and Obviously, he's still way too strong in the token of life. Helping as well. Kraken. Oh, he missed the charge right there. He hit the cliff. Not the best initiation possible. And actually, the heal bomb comes out. And Moon Queen's going to be back to full life. Obviously, similar rage helping with that as well. So down goes the ranged rax. And that will be the end. So they do force the buyback. And they still get the middle rax pushed. Yeah, they should keep pushing, though. Chronosphere's still down. The refresher is up, though. So. Yeah. Uh, That's where NK just needs to delay. They, they can't. Go. They need both uh, Chrono Spheres. Yeah. I think they're going to delay just just long enough here. They want to they're at least. They're just playing but... way too passive. They're letting their tower go down for free. Yep, it is. And then, oh, Kraken gets Moonbeam as he jumps in. Stalls his charge as a result. Kind of screwed things up. Well, God, they it's so close. Impressive. Yeah, they, they, they want to wait, but Chrono it's going to be six. another Rax. They did not want to rest so Draconis just charges in right there. He's going to take some good damage. There's Draconis in the background. They caught a couple in the background. Moon Queen's going to be fine. In comes the Soul's Blessing, though. The second bubble comes out, but the Soul's Blessing is up. So all that's doing is just delaying the inevitable. Kronos now, he's going to be gone. on rewind proc a little bit. Not nearly enough, though. GG, well played. Game number two going to go to BMG, it looks like. And that means they're going to be up two games to one now. One win away from qualifying for Thailand for the World Han Finals. Upon tour season two, wow, what a finish there. I, I think we all agree, though. NK just way too passive at the very end. They just did not want to risk it without a double bubble, and it didn't work out as a result. Any final thoughts from you guys? Sender, we'll start with you. Uh, I think BMG just played, executed the game uh, much better than uh, NK did. They're always five in every fight, and uh, it, they lost a couple fights, but they pulled through in the end with the, some DD runes onto Moon Queen. It looked a little scary at some points, but they pulled through in the end. Yeah. Kyle? Um, uh, just well played by Lions.